Man, you got a messed up story right here in the Houston area. This crooked police had lied and, and got a brother, you know, jammed up on some charges. And I want you to hear, you know, exactly what happened with this particular story. Let's roll that. She didn't have a job. Tina Baldwin says her son has struggled with drugs and homelessness since his teenage years. He was homeless. He never had, he never, ever since he, he never had a house. He never owned a house. He, never, he didn't have no money. But she never doubted that Frederick Jeffrey's conviction in 2018 on possession charges were drummed up by the officer who made that arrest, Gerald Goins. They only went by Goins were in his background. That's how Fred got the time he got. Goins at the time was a respected veteran narcotics officer, not someone facing murder charges and accused of faking evidence in multiple cases. Jeffrey has always maintained his innocence, even writing letters from jail. In a letter sent to the district clerk in 2020, Jeffrey writes from prison that he needs an update on his appeals asking, I see on TV that 69 people have got their case thought out from HPD officer Gerald Goins. I'm trying to find out what's going on in my case. Can you help me? Then in March of this year, Jeffrey wrote to the judge in his case, asking, I've been incarcerated for five years and five months, fighting for my freedom for a crime I didn't commit. Today, the district attorney's office agreed, saying Goins used faulty evidence, like a phone Jeffrey didn't have and a house he didn't live in, to get a 25-year sentence. Fred didn't, was homeless. He, he couldn't afford a piece of bubble gum. So I know he didn't have a house, and I don't know why they would say that he had a house. Jeffrey could be freed as early as Friday morning. I love him. I'm glad he's home. And begin the uncertain process of piecing back together his life. The worst thing about this story is that your own people doing this to you. You know, you would expect this out of the white supremacist, but you having your own people do this to you, that, that's utterly despicable. That is so despicable. I mean, doing this to anybody is despicable, but doing it to your own, knowing how black people are treated, you know, in this country. Now, this dude here that's planting, you know, things on, lying, all of that, you know, they, they do this mess all the time. And they do it to innocent black people because in a lot of ways they get away with it, especially when they target, you know, poor black people. Because poor black people don't have the money to defend themselves. This is why, you know, I believe that the best thing that black people could do, if you want to say, okay, what can we build in America, Phil, that could really help black people? Build a black version of the ACLU and have it supported and funded by the community. In other words, when black people get in issues, you know, they don't have to worry about legal representation. They can just call that organization and then they send an attorney over there to help fight their case. I'm not saying, you know, those attorneys go fight cases where people, you know, are clearly, you know, clear, clear, clear cut, you know, guilty. We're not talking about that. We're talking about these cases where these cops are trumping, uh, trumping charges up, planting things. You know, those people need to be defending. A lot of times they can defend them at trial and get them out of it. A lot of times when you put on this public defender, public defenders work for the state. You using a state attorney to defend you. You know what I'm saying? Like in the sports world, nobody does that. It's like using a, you need a backup quarterback and you're going to go to the team you're playing against and tell them, Hey, I need a quarterback. Okay. We're going to send you this guy. Do you really think that that other attorney is really on your side? And the ones who are great, you know, public defenders usually don't last that long because they get their own practice and all of that. But yeah, this is utterly, utterly despicable. Black folks, always being targeted. And I said this, we talk about racism, white supremacy, and that is true, but we have our own as collaborators with white supremacy as well. We can't stay in this position unless you have a collaborator that's working with white supremacy to keep us in the condition that we're in. And that's one thing that we don't really focus on a lot. We focus on the white supremacists, but we don't focus on the collaborators the people that's out there collaborating and want us and getting paid off of it or benefiting off of it. You understand? Because there's no reason for us to still be in the conditions that we're in, in 2022, unless a good portion of black people are collaborating with white supremacy to keep us in the position that we're in as a collective of people. That's why I say we need to get extremely hostile to anybody that's collaborating with white supremacy, no matter what field they work in or where they come from because that's extremely dangerous. I'm glad this brother's getting out and that's great. 
but he shouldn't have been there not one day. And yes, he needs to definitely file a, a, a federal lawsuit and they're going to have to cut the check to him. They're going to have to. It, it's just that simple. But y'all let me know what y'all think about this story. Like I said, this is utterly despicable to watch a, a black man do this to another black man. It is just sick.